Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Saturday, July the 13th, 2024. So here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery, courtesy of TropicalTidbits.com at Dr. Levi Cowan. There's a link in the description below this video. And we can see what the satellite imagery shows us right now in the deep tropics of the Atlantic. We have a tropical wave coming off of Africa right now, but that's bringing a lot of dry Saharan dust off of Africa. It's been very hot there. It's been really dry. And so a lot of that dusty air is moving off of Africa. And this is basically a cap. This is a lid on the atmosphere to prevent any tropical cyclone formation. And we can see what I mean by that when we zoom in a little closer here, we can see this dry Saharan dust moving off of Africa. See that right there? That's an indication that there's just a lot of dry air and not a lot of moisture to get tropical waves going into tropical depressions or storms. In fact, when we zoom in on the eastern Atlantic sector over western Africa, we can see there is tropical wave activity. We can see a lot of burstiness to the deep convection, some confluence. But the problem here, again, is all this dusty air that is moving off of Africa, that hot, dry air loft overlapping warm moist air at the surface. Another way we could visualize this is by looking at the University of Wisconsin total precipitable water imagery. This is a loop just like our satellite imagery but it shows us where there's a lot of water in the deep layer of the atmosphere in a column, right? And so when we look at our deep tropics down here we have a lot of total precipitable water in the air but the problem is every time these tropical waves try to develop they bring a lot of drier air from higher latitudes, also from Africa, as you can see here, where there's not a whole lot of water over the northern deserts there, and that's to be expected in a very hot climate where temperatures there are 115 to 125 degrees with intense solar heating that dries out the air because you're mixing to great depths, and that air dries out as it moves off of Africa. And that is an inhibitor right now of any tropical waves to get going, to get moving into a tropical depression or a storm. What we want to see is something developing down here, and it moves generally this direction, like what Beryl did. That's why Beryl was able to develop pretty nicely, because it was in that pocket of moist air. Problem is, if we get any tropical wave that moves off of Africa like this, there's a lot of drier air that is coming off of the continent. Because of this, the National Hurricane Center does not expect any tropical development in the next seven days, which is good news for our friends that live in the windward, leeward islands, the Greater Antilles, Jamaica, as well as Cuba, the Cayman Islands, including for the Bahamas, and of course here in the United States, including for Mexico, for their south, looking all quiet. But when we take a look at the Eastern Pacific, there's a different story going on. We do have the possibility here of tropical formation, but there's only a 5 to 10% chance of any formation in the next seven days. So that's good news. The basins looking very quiet, especially the Eastern Pacific. We only had one named storm so far this season, which is near record low for this time of the year. Now, while we are waiting for more tropical activity to pick up, perhaps by late July in early August. The Gulf of Mexico is recovering nicely with sea surface temperatures now in the mid to upper 80s, especially along the uh, coast of Tampa here in Florida. We're seeing water temperatures right around 87 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit or about 31 to almost 32 Celsius. That is incredibly warm. In fact, I think 32 Celsius equates to about 89 even 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so those waters are cooking. We also have very warm waters off the coast of Louisiana, which again will be used later this season. The warmer and the undisturbed Gulf gets, the more likely our waters are going to become. And right now they're largely around 30 Celsius for mid-July, which is well above average for this time of the year. We can see this on the Coral Reef Watch sea surface temperature anomaly plot. The orange areas indicate temperatures above average at the sea surface, and the areas in the darker red indicate well above average. And the blue areas, of course, denote temperatures that are below average or slightly below average to near average for this time of the year. So we can see much of the eastern gulf really untapped so far this hurricane season. So therefore, it's really warm. 
We're going to warm up these waters quickly in the western Gulf of Mexico because we're not anticipating any tropical formation there in the next seven days. And the waters here in the deep tropics really warm, warmer than they have ever been before. And they are going to continue to warm up because we're about to get a reduction in our trade winds over the next week. And that's going to really warm up these water temperatures even further. So the Atlantic as a whole is running pretty far above average. We're seeing our 80 degree isotherm. That's the 26 degree. That's the yellow colors that you see on your screen. That's pretty far north already. Breaching 40 degrees north in latitude on the western half of the Atlantic. And then, of course, we got some very warm waters over the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. We saw what happened with Barrel. It took full advantage of that upper ocean heat content and very warm sea surface temperatures. And we ended up with one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded in early July, late June timeframe. And that's what happens when we have waters that are the warmest they have ever been before. We can get some crazy stuff happening in the deep tropics. Speaking of upper ocean heat content, here's a look at that map here. We can see areas in the darker red colors and some of the magenta colors indicate very high upper ocean heat content numbers across the uh, Jamaica region, as well as say if you're in the, the Cayman Islands, we're seeing very high uh, upper ocean heat content values. This is a three day average mean, by the way. So we can see pockets of even up higher upper ocean heat content. And look at that off the coast of Florida. We're seeing some record numbers too. So any tropical wave or any tropical disturbance that moves off of Africa likely tracks this way or this way. It's gonna run into some very favorable oceanic conditions. If the atmosphere would be more favorable right now, it's very unfavorable right now at the moment. Now on to the forecast we go. This is a look at the latest GFS model. This is the American model ran by the National Weather Service, United States federal government. And we can see this is a three plot series from Tropical Tidbits, courtesy of him making this all possible. So we're looking at our height lines. These are the black contours that you see. These are thicknesses. The wind barbs on your screen denote the direction and speed. All right, so the, uh, the wind direction is showing us the barbs are pointing this way, and then your flags indicate the intensity. So the longest barb is a 10 knot um, increment. The shorter flag is a five knot uh, wind speed increment. So you can kind of get an idea. I'm not going to go a whole lot of detail into this, but this kind of denotes our wind speed and direction. And right now we have trade winds blowing in from east to west, and this is dragging a lot of dry air from the Saharan air layer. This is from Africa. So when we go forward, what we're looking for here is any bundling up of vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. That's the color shading on your screen. Yellows, lighter spin, brown or redder colors, dark red, uh, more stronger spin. So we're not seeing much in the GFS model over the next five to 10 days or even in the next seven days. We could even go out to July 23rd. This is the furthest that I will go out because we go into La La Land or we go into fantasy land beyond that big ridge of high pressure anchored across the North Atlantic the, or, or the central subtropics of the Atlantic, really bringing more Saharan dust. But the trade winds at this time of the year be, uh, begin to slacken a little bit. And then we do have a tropical wave coming off of Africa. But once again, look at these wind barbs. They're coming from higher latitudes. So that's going to drag in a lot of dry air air from higher latitudes down to the south. And that's a suppressive type pattern that we're in right now with nothing that is favorable. So now looking at the European model, same plot system. When we look at the forecast here on the Euro ECMWF, there is a little bit more of some spin in the atmosphere in the short term, but nothing really gets going because we have a lot of sinking motion. We have a lot of dry air in the atmosphere. In fact, if we take a look at where this tropical wave actually is, we can see there's just so much of it in the air. There's a lot of dry air, nothing that really um, gets alarming news to us for any tropical development in the short term. And when we go forward in time, nothing really, um, develops at all 
This is out to about 180 hours out. So all the way through about the 20th of July. The Atlantic looks pretty quiet, but we all know this is kind of la la fantasy land on most of the global models and things could pick up really quickly, unexpectedly out of the blue. So we'll keep an eye on that when time gets closer. But all we have is some areas of spin coming off of Africa, which are broad tropical waves and broad systems don't like to spin up very quickly. And that's what we have here continuing with for the next 10 days, perhaps through the 23rd of July. Another way we can visualize the unfavorability or favorability of the atmosphere is simply by looking at the GFS 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. This is where we have upward motion in the atmosphere. So if any tropical wave is able to develop in this, it will likely um, develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane. But usually the more favorable conditions actually are just to the west of the maximum upward motion, which is the darker green colors. So looking at this map, this is the Atlantic over here. I'm circling this in. This is the Eastern Pacific. This is the Central. This is the Western Pacific. So hopefully you can follow me here very easily on this. And the red colors, the orange colors indicate sinking motion, unfavorable conditions, the suppressive phase of the MJO. And when we go forward in the next 10 days, we can see again over the Atlantic, a lot of orange, very unfavorable, and a lot of green over the Western Pacific. That's deemed very favorable. In fact, we could see a few typhoons out of this environment uh, over the next 10 days, perhaps in the Western Pacific. We'll talk more about that once it gets closer because my friends that live in Guam, people that live in Taiwan, as well as the Philippines, I want to cover you all in the Western Pacific, and we will do that once things get closer and get more or better aligned with the modeling. While the Atlantic remains quiet, I would not mind talking about the Western Pacific. And this is where we have a lot of our upward motion, and this could stay with you all for a while, probably through the end of July. So it's not going to just be a week or so. You might have to keep an eye on this for a couple of weeks for enhancement of tropical activity in the Western Pacific Basin, possibly even in the Indian Ocean Basin as well. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Saturday, July the 13th, 2024, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do live streams when there's an active event going on in the Atlantic maybe even the Western Pacific, as long as the Atlantic remains calm. And also I do videos on the tropics as well. So if you're new, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media to show your awesome support, ring the bell icon, and leave a comment in the section below this video. But until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll have more on the tropics tomorrow.